Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here for Friday Night Flies at Bass Pro Shops in Tawasin. We're at the White River Fly Shop once again. Uh, sorry about last week, I did have a video filmed, but no audio. So we didn't run it. Um, I'll maybe do that fly again sometime. So it's a little uh, saltwater cutthroat fly. Um, dry fly, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to tinker with that one a little bit more and we'll uh, come back with that one at a future date. Maybe next week, who knows. Um, so I've been kind of tinkering with a new bull trout fly as well. I actually finally got to fish it. Um, I need to make a few more tweaks and maybe I'll show that one at some point as well. Um, so i got some cool stuff in the works. Um, also picked up Art Lindgren's new book. Uh, it's called My Steelhead Flies. It's all the flies that he's developed and they are beautiful. There's some awesome patterns in there. Uh, follow us on social media. I know I'm going to be uh, tying through that book. I'm sure uh, Scott the Boldest, Boulder. I know he's going to be uh, tying some stuff as well. Maybe even Brad. Who knows? I think he's getting a copy for his birthday. Um, yeah, so it's a new decade for me. Just turned 30 on Wednesday. Oh, man, I'm feeling old. Not really. Um, so, yeah, happy birthday to me. You can send all your gifts to me here at Bass Pro. Come on in. Bring me some uh, jungle cock cakes and uh, things like that because you know you want it. They're awesome. Um, so today I've got, it's basically steelhead season, just about everywhere now. Um, they're starting to show up on the Squamish. Um, I know that the vetter has been fishing as well, if you fish out that way. Um, but yeah, so this is a fun little steelhead fly. It goes together super quick. It's called the Rocket Minnow. It's actually one that we have here in our boxes at the store. Um, I was kind of looking at it. It's a cool pattern. And it's good to have a good balance of weighted and unweighted steelhead fly. So this one's an unweighted version. Great for those days when it's nice and clear um, and low water conditions. And that way you won't be snagging up all the time, stuff like that. So this one goes together pretty quick. We're doing a bunch of different variations. What I'm going to be doing today is the, the blue and pink. We'll uh, show you a couple different ones I've done. i got black and blue. I've got an olive and red as well. It'll imitate sculpin. Um, but do it all up in your favorite steelhead colors. It goes together pretty quick, like I said. It's not like some of the marathon steelhead flies that we've done in the past. Um, so it's a good one to throw in your boxes just in case they're not hitting the heavy stuff. Um, switch it up and throw them a curveball and have something a little higher in the water column. Uh, but yes, yeah, so let's head on down and check this one out. All right, guys, there it is, the Rocket Minnow. So as you can see, this is the blue and pink. Um, sugar pop colors for sure. So just give you a little slow roll there. Super easy fly to go together. Only a couple materials, a little stinger hook action. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the pink and blue. Get rid of that. This is the black and blue. This is some cool crystal flash I just picked up. It's crystal or uh, copper and blue, which is pretty sweet. There you go. There's kind of the action on that guy. Got that nice teardrop shape that we all love for our steelhead flies. And one more that I just did is this sculpin y kind of color. So that's just red and olive. Super cool color. We saw some massive sculpins on Wednesday when Jordan and I were out fishing. Um, there were some big boys out there. Probably about the size of my hand. It was terrifying. Uh, but yeah, so there's kind of a back view for you. They look pretty cool. I think they're going to swim well. So yeah, like I said, super easy fly to go together. Uh, we tie these on a shank. Good one to just throw those steelhead a change up every now and then. They're kind of looking at the same stuff over and over and over again. You just switch it up on them a little bit. Sometimes that's all it takes. So for a shank, I'm using these fish skull articulation shanks. This is a 20 millimeter. So quite short. Um, there's not much to these flies, so you don't need a super long shank. And for thread, I'm using UTC 140 and Peacock Blue. This is a pretty sweet color. I saw it a few years ago and picked up the spool. And Once I started fishing for steelhead, that's when I started using it. Just start that right on that uh, return bend there. Kind of want it to cinch up on itself here. I want to give a little shout out to Griffin. You've heard us, we love him. Um, I was having issues with my jaws and hooks were slipping on them. And they've always been kind of a little bit misaligned and it just gotten worse and worse the more I tie on it. I'm tying a lot, guys, so uh, don't take this as a bad thing. But shot him an email, a couple photos. A couple days later, I got a new set of jaws in my mailbox. So. Shout out to them, great customer service. 
Now for a hook on this guy, we're going to be using a trailer hook. So this is just some intruder wire in red. Cut off yourself a little chunk. Um, what I like to do, I just like to crimp it. Hope my mom's not watching because I like to use my teeth for that. So just to crimp it, it just makes it easier to get those hooks on. And basically I like to use a size 2 stinger hook. So there's a little notch in my jaws here. I know that's roughly where with these flies, that's kind of where I like to throw that intruder wire. It allows me to fit a size 2 in there fairly easily. If I can get that to sit. So what I like to do, I like to just position it so the wire is splaying out. There's a little bump on these shanks. So I like to have the wire going on the left side and the right side, or the near side and the far side. And I like to just make sure that crimp is dead center. Of course, that all just fell again. That's probably good there. Crank it down a little bit more. There we go. That way, it just sits right where I want it. Now what we'll do, wrap back on this just a smidge more. Lock her down. Try to make sure that's sitting fairly flat. I did one the other day and uh, it was just off kilter just a little bit and the hook won't ride uh, up, which kind of sucks. So now I'm just going to wind that forward. There's a little step right there, as you can see. So what I like to do, I like to take the butt ends of the wire, tuck them through, through the eye. Continue to wrap forward. Then I'm going to pull them underneath. You have a couple good securing wraps here. And I'm going to trim them right there, right where that step down is, just to kind of fill in that gap. So I'll just flip that guy up. I'll just trim that away. You can see that fills in that gap nicely. You've seen me do that when I've tied these spay flies and stuff like that as well. Of course, that guy spun on me there. Just kind of fills in that gap. Makes things look a little neater. Just like so. Perfect. So now. <coughs> oh, oh, excuse me. I'm just going to add a little butt of dubbing. So I just got some ice dub and fluorescent pink. You can use whatever colors you want. This is the fun about these flies. Go obnoxious if you want to go obnoxious. I know Dana loves the amount of pink flies that we have. He doesn't use pink much up in his neck of the woods. I think he should. Dana should give it a go, bud. You never know. You might catch the fish of a lifetime. So there we go. So we're just going to dub this up the body. Just going to make a little bit of a dubbing ball there. Covers up probably half of that shank. And now I'm going to make a dubbing loop. So you guys have seen me do this million times before. I'm just going to pull the thread out, stick my finger on top, pull it back over, wrap around the shank twice, and then I'm going to throw my thread over the loop twice. That closes it up. And then I'm going to wrap back on this just a couple times just to completely close it. So now that V is attached to the shank. So I'm just going to tuck that off to the side for a second. And for our shoulder part of this fly. We need something that's going to help prop it up. So just like when I tie intruders and stuff like that, I love foxtail. So I've got some uh, hot pink foxtail from Superfly here. This is great stuff. I've got all the steelhead colors you could want at the store here. So come on in, say hello. Check out what we've got. So I'm just going to cut myself off a bit of a clump here. Don't want to go too, too heavy. Less is more with these flies. There we go. I'm just going to cut that nice and close to the bottom. I'm just going to clean out all this under fur here just by running my fingers through it. There's not much on these super fly tail pieces, so I enjoy it quite a bit. And then there's all these guard hairs here. You can keep them if you want. I'm going to take them out just to make things a little more even. Doesn't have to be perfect, something like that. So now this is where you can kind of play around with this. You can make this as long or as short as you like. I like this to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to have it extending 
roughly to about the midway point of that wire. So I'm just going to shove that in my loop there. I'm going to take my dubbing spinner. I've got one of the fancy OPST ones. This thing spins like a dream. It is worth every penny. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to give this a couple little spins here just to help kind of bind everything in place. And then just my fingers, I'm just going to spread this out. So I've got a little over an inch there of material. That'll give me about three, three wraps or so. I'm going to trim this maybe quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch off there. So everything's nice and tight. Now I'm going to pinch my loop shut. I'm going to give that a little spin. Again, it doesn't take much to get this spinner going. And I slowly pull back on it. That spins all my fox. Now if I want, just give it a quick little test pull. Everything seems pretty good. Give it a little, another little spin just to be sure. I'll just kind of pick that out a little bit. Brush it with the toothbrush. And now I've got something kind of crazy like that. Now when you're looking at these, you'll kind of find a natural part sometimes. I'm just going to lick my fingers a little bit. I'm just going to stroke all those fibers back. Just like so. Handy to have a cup of water. If not, just lick your fingers. You might taste of uh, fox tail after, but it's worth it. Makes it a little more manageable. So I'm just going to wrap these one in front of the other, nice and tight together. Like I said, about an inch or so gives you about three wraps. So that's two. Might be able to squeeze one more in here. These are all pretty tight against each other. I'm not overlapping, but they're one right in front of the other. All right, just a couple wraps of the bare thread. I'll lock that down. A couple behind, a couple in front, just to hold it all in place. Perfect. So what I can do now is I can take my brush. I'll just brush all that forward. Since it's just fox, not much is going to get trapped in there, so you don't need to pick it out. You can if you like. <sighs> all right. As you can see, that really stands up as a nice big shoulder. So I'm actually just going to wrap back on this just a little bit, just to help tighten that up just a little bit. So that's sitting exactly where I want it. So now I'm going to add some wings to this fly. So I've got some grizzly hackle here in hot pink. If you can't find these, use whatever you got. You can throw rubber legs in there or pretty much anything. So I'm going to measure that so it goes basically just behind the loop there. I'm just going to pull everything off the stem there. Now these feathers can be a little tricky to come by, so... You can use just regular grizzly too if you want. And I'm just going to tie one on my side. You won't be able to see it. But tie one on my side. I'll flip it over. Tie one on your side. You can kind of tie them up on top too and they can kind of dangle back. I prefer to be them on the side. Just give them a little contrast to this fly. Wrap back on that. So there you go. You kind of see how they're sitting. I'll wrap forward a little bit. Bend those stems back. Don't want these ripping out on you. And I'll trim those stems away. Now you could add some uh, head cement there if you like. I don't have any handy, but I have done this on uh, a few of the other ones. Just bend those stems a little bit just to get them popped out a little bit. Now, we're gonna take some marabou. So marabou's got some really good properties. It's super flowy and wispy. If you can find any good stuff. Um, Superfly makes some really nice stuff. So this is their, their marabou, this is Silver Doctor Blue. This blue and the pink really pop against each other. They're great contrasting colors. So I'm gonna tie this in by the tip. This way, the smaller fibers are on the inside and then it progressively gets a little bit longer. So I isolate that tip, lick my fingers just to make it a little more manageable. Like so, and I'll tie that in. There we go. And I'm just going to pull that over. 
bring my thread up to the front. I'll trim away that tip. You want to first wrap, you kind of want to be a little bit careful. The, uh, the stems can be fairly brittle. Once again, just lick your fingers and preen all that marabou back. And now we're just going to wrap. You can go as full or as sparse as you like. I like them somewhere in between. I'll try to count these there. That's two wraps. First couple are always going to be quite sparse. That's three. It's usually about the fourth one where they start to get a little more full. Four, probably do five on this one. Get one more here. There we go. There's the fifth wrap there. I'll finish it on top. Come over top. Trap that in. Now what I like to do here, just gonna just blow it like that just to get everything kind of sitting where it should be. I'm going to pull everything back. I'm just going to wrap back on it ever so slightly. This just helps to really lock in that stem. Well, you don't have to worry about it coming undone. All right, so there we go. Got that going on. And I'm just going to build up a small blue head here. This thread. So, and we're going to whip finish. If you're just going to whip finish, I'd throw two on there, just in case, to help kind of protect it. I'm just doing one, because if you haven't guessed, this is my favorite material. I'm going to coat it with the Solares Bone Dry. So just be careful not to get any of the Marabou under this stuff. It's a great product. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. Now help me get the stuff in here. I'm uh, email Bass Pro and uh, tell them to start carrying it. It's one I've been definitely ranting about for quite a while now. And we're just going to zap that to cure it. You can see that pink is really popping on this guy. It's a pretty cool looking fly. So now, we'll just brush this out a little bit. There you go. That is the Rocket Minnow. Super easy little steel head pattern. It's got a nice little veil on there. That's going to flow nicely in the water. You can attach whatever stinger hook you like. Uh, these hot pink ones that I have here, these are Marudos. You've seen me use them before. Um, the, the owners are great hooks. The Gamagatsu Octopus hooks are all great too. So you can't really go wrong. Pick your favorite. Throw it on there. And there you go. The Rocket Minnow. Simple little steelhead fly to add to your box. All right, let's head on up and sign out. All right, guys, there it is, the Rocket Minnow. Like I said, a uh, super simple little steelhead fly. You've seen some of ours before, and they're like the marathon flies that take half an hour. Uh, this one's pretty quick. goes together easy. You can definitely throw like a cone head on there or something like that, and uh, even some lead wraps if you want it to be a little bit weighted. Um, that'll definitely get it down a little quicker. But we're fishing sink tips mostly, and having something a little lighter is going to be uh, nice for when it gets nice and cold and clear like the rivers have been as of late. Um, they weren't so much on Wednesday, but... They're starting to drop again as the weather gets a little bit colder. So, yeah, good to have a variety of stuff, um, even different weights too. If you're using a medium dumbbell eye, use a, a small as well and everything in between. And vary up the sizes too, so it's good to have a good variety because you never know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, actually, you know what? Looking at this guy, I forgot. I actually add a wing in there. Um, so in front of the, the marabou, as you can see with the other ones, so after I tie in the... Uh, the hackles on the side, I'll actually add some uh, crystal flash. So I go about five strands, I tie them back, and then I fold the other ends over, and I trim it just so it's just past the, uh, the hook point. So on this one, for example, I would have used uh, dark purple crystal flash. I'll throw that in the uh, material list on our website for you guys so you can pick that up. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the Rocket Minnow. Hope you guys enjoyed. Come up with something for you next week. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll do that cutthroat fly I did... Uh, last week that didn't work out. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hit us up on Facebook with any questions you got. Hit us up on Instagram. Give us a follow. Um, we're pretty much everywhere these days, so uh, give us a shout and we'll get back to you. Um, yeah, until next week. See you then.